Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. We also have Instagram and Twitter. You can find us at TPM Videos. There is no denying that Disneyland in California is the Disney park with the most history. I always see tons of comments asking for more Disneyland videos, so it's about time we dive deeper into the original Disney theme park. From its opening in 1955 until now, there's been dozens of attractions that have found a home in Disneyland. Whether they're still around or now abandoned and extinct, their history is hidden all throughout the park. So to help me discuss the history and secrets of Disneyland, I'm joined by Mark from Yesterworld. Hey everyone, I'm really excited to be here and to explore Disneyland's history. It's gonna be a fun ride. So sit back as we count down the top seven hidden and abandoned secrets of Disneyland rides. Number seven, the Dominguez Palm. Adventureland is home to many trees that fill this luscious land, but hidden among all the greenery by the Jungle Cruise is one very prominent tree. You may or may not have noticed the Canary Island date palm that towers over Adventureland, and this tree holds over 120 years of history. Ten of the original 160 acres of land covered by orange groves that was purchased by Walt Disney was owned by the Dominguez family. Aside from orange trees, this piece of land also had a house as well as many other mature trees. The Dominguez house was relocated behind Main Street and used as a construction office. It can still be seen in the model on display in the lobby of Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. Well, that palm tree that towers over Adventureland also belonged to the Dominguez family. Ron Dominguez, whose name can be seen on the window of the market house on Main Street, used to live on the land. He began working at Disneyland when it first opened and then went on to become the vice president of Walt Disney Attractions. Well, in 1896, the Canary Island Palm was a wedding gift given to Ron's grandparents. They originally owned the land. Thousands of trees were cleared and removed to make way for Disneyland, but the palm tree survived the construction. It had a lot of sentimental value to the Dominguez family, so Disney promised to keep the tree, and it was relocated to the entrance of the Jungle Cruise where it can still be seen today, only it's much taller than it was in 1955. When building the new Jungle Cruise queue in the mid-90s, they built right around this tree to make sure they didn't ruin any history. Next time you're in the area and you walk by and see this tree, just remember that you're looking at something that's been around for over 120 years. Number 6. Get Your Tickets If you've spent a good amount of time in Fantasyland, this Alice in Wonderland mushroom structure or even the storybook canal's lighthouse might look pretty familiar. And believe it or not, they used to have a pretty essential purpose. You see, unlike today, during the early years of Disneyland, while some of the park's experiences were complementary with the park's admission, the vast majority were not and required tickets. A tickets would allow you to experience attractions such as the Main Street Cinema or the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea exhibit, whereas an E ticket, which was introduced in Disneyland's first major expansion in 1959, included the monorail, Matterhorn bobsleds, and the Jungle Cruise. And while you could purchase these tickets at the park's entrance, another option, depending on the attraction, was at one of the various booths throughout the lands, which of course included Fantasyland. However, in the late 1970s, in order to compete with Magic Mountain, all-inclusive passports were introduced as an alternative to buying individual tickets, and in 1982, the A through E ticket system was officially put to rest. However, you can still find a number of these booths within the park, and especially within Fantasyland, though some debate as to which are originals, refurbished, or complete replicas. But either way, the next time you're in Disneyland, look out for these fantastic tributes to the past. Number 5 the Abandoned Past of Tomorrow Tomorrowland may be the land of the future, but its abandoned past looms over the walkways and through the buildings of this land. This circular platform, in addition to the beams placed along the center of the walkways, used to be part of a classic Disney attraction. The People Mover was one of the attractions that opened with the 1967 refurbishment of Tomorrowland. Traveling on an elevated track, you went through a grand circle tour of the land. It was referred to as a prototype of the future of transportation. 
The 16-minute leisure ride winded its way through the landscape, adding a great kinetic energy to Tomorrowland. Well, fast forward to 1995. The future became the past, and Tomorrowland was beginning to feel a little outdated, just like it is today. Disney felt the ride was no longer a prototype and closed the attraction on August 21st, 1995. During the Tomorrowland overhaul in 1998, the People Mover was turned into the short-lived rocket rides, but due to its high speeds, a lot of stress was placed on the unmodified People Mover beams. The ride experienced a lot of technical issues, and it closed on April 28, 2001, leaving the load station platform and tracks completely abandoned in Tomorrowland. The gold railings that line the track can still be spotted through the land, and some trees have even begun to grow over the old support beams and tracks while they deteriorate. Thousands of people walk right by this not-so-hidden abandoned structure every day, and I'm sure many of them don't even know its history and think it really is just part of Tomorrowland's theming. Rumor has it that Disney will begin to remove some of the old tracks very soon, but do you think they'll ever bring the People Mover back in some form? Leave a comment down below! Number 4. Resting in the Tiki Room If you're a fan of Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, chances are you know about the secret hidden bathrooms within the waiting area, but there's actually a bit more history behind these facilities, as the original concept for the Tiki Room wasn't just a sit-down show as it is today, but a restaurant where you could dine while the tiki birds performed all around you, and at the center of the room would be a coffee bar. And of course, just like any Disney theme park restaurant, restrooms would be required within the building, and as initially planned, the restaurant's kitchen would have connected to the Plaza Pavilion. But as far as why the restaurant idea was scrapped, it's been said that the logistics of an animatronic dinner show were deemed too complex, though other sources claim it was due to the realization that adding a food service would limit the capacity of the attraction. Another explanation is that Walt was so impressed by what Imagineers were doing with the animatronics, he felt they deserved the full attention of guests as opposed to the distractions of being in a restaurant. Come to the Tiki Room! Hurry to the Tiki Room! Regardless, it was from this that the neighboring Tahitian Terrace restaurant was born, which would share its kitchen with the Plaza Pavilion, and Imagineers were tasked with reworking the experience as a standalone attraction. However, the bathroom stayed as well as the primary structure of the coffee bar, which still contained storage space initially meant for silverware. But with the planned transformation of Aladdin's Oasis into a Tiki Room-themed dining location, we'll hopefully get at least a glimpse of what could have been. Number three. Docking the Past One of the quieter spots in Disneyland can be found hidden here behind the Matterhorn in what's known as Fantasia Gardens. This serene waterway platform is now a seating area for the Edelweiss Snacks restaurant, but it's actually what's left over from another extinct Disneyland attraction. In 1957, Disney opened the Motorboat Cruise, and this platform used to be the old loading station. The motorboat cruise took guests past lots of greenery, making its way through the canals and under many bridges that interacted with the rides of Tomorrowland. As the years went on, it did begin to lose its appeal, so in an attempt to revitalize the ride in 1991, Disney decided to turn the motorboat cruise into the motorboat cruise to Gummy Glen, featuring the gummy bears. Just before Mickey's Toontown opened in January of 1993, Disney decided that the money it cost to run the ride would be better spent in Toontown, so they closed the motorboat cruise for good, making it extinct. The dock was brought back to its original form as it's seen today, and has been like that since about 1993. During the construction of the Finding Nemo submarine voyage in 2007, about two-thirds of the canals were filled in, but it's rumored that you can still find some of the tracks below the water's surface right around the dock area. This area here is all that's really left of the canal, but those rocks that are in the center still separate the two paths that would have led you into both sides of the dock to unload. This area is now very quiet compared to what it was like prior to 1993, but the dock acts as a subtle reminder of this now extinct Disneyland ride. Number 2. A Cavern in the Sky 
When riding the Matterhorn, it's easy to be distracted by the abominable snowman and high-speed thrills. But next time, take a closer look when you reach the former Crystal Cavern, as while two retired Matterhorn vehicles are fairly easy to make out among the wreckage, the rest isn't as obvious, and are actually pieces of a certain attraction that used to pass through the mountain itself. Our Matterhorn was scaled for the first time on its inauguration. Since then, during the vacation months, climbing it has become a daily event. Alongside the Matterhorn, the Skyway also debuted in 1959, which not only gave visitors an amazing view of the park and a way to travel between Fantasyland and Tomorrowland, but gave them a glimpse inside the Matterhorn itself. As when passing through the mountain, while structure beams were dressed up to try to retain the Disney magic, you would get a fantastic view of the ride's lift hill and the interior of this mountain-based roller coaster. However, upon the iconic attraction's closure in 1994, the Matterhorn underwent a refurbishment which included partially filling in the holes, and when it reopened in 1995, the Crystal Cavern now contained a tribute to the former president of the Walt Disney Company, who had tragically passed away the previous year. And later, during a 2015 refurbishment, while the primary focus was on the new snowman animatronics, the Crystal Cavern was given a makeover, and scattered among the wreckage, two original Matterhorn vehicles and pieces of the original Skyway buckets were cemented into the scene. However, in light of public outcry in response, to the removal of the Frank Wells tribute, it was added back in 2016, and can now be seen among the other remnants of Disneyland's past. Number 1. The Riding Tracks of the Old West All the sights in Frontierland blend together nicely to tell this 19th century story of the Old West, but there's some areas of the land that are really just pieces of an abandoned Disney attraction just left to rot. In July of 1956, Disneyland opened the Rainbow Caverns Mine Train Ride, which eventually became Mine Train Through Nature's Wonderland in 1960. You climbed aboard a mine train in the town of Rainbow Ridge to then explore the landscape of the Wild West. As time went on though, people began to want more thrills, so the ride closed in January of 1977 to make way for Big Thunder Mountain. Mine Train Through Nature's Wonderland covered a pretty large footprint, but not all of it was used for Big Thunder, so parts of the ride were just left in place. While riding the Mark Twain Riverboat, you get pretty close to what's left of the old rotting train tracks that circle the perimeter of the Rivers of America. This area used to be known as Cascade Peak. It's all overgrown now, and the 75-foot-tall peak was removed around 1998. But if you look closely, you can still see an old rock tunnel hidden right there through the trees. And believe it or not, the other end of the tunnel can be found boarded up right off this pathway in Frontierland. There's even still a little bit of track left over here as well. And this mining tunnel to the right of the other tunnel was also part of the old extinct ride as well. And that's not all. Big Thunder Mountain is still home to the town of Rainbow Ridge, and when your train rushes into the unload station, you actually pass by the buildings that used to line the old load station. Mine Train Through Nature's Wonderland might be extinct, but it's really just hidden all through Frontierland. You just need to know where to look. I just want to say a huge thank you to Mark from Yesterworld for joining me on the channel. Hey man, I'm just so glad I got to be part of the video, and I hope everyone watching enjoyed these stories as much as we loved exploring them. If you aren't familiar with Yesterworld Entertainment, be sure to check out his channel and subscribe. He covers all aspects of extinct theme park rides and attractions from Disneyland to Walt Disney World to Universal Studios, and he covers movies as well. It's some really great stuff. You can find Yesterworld's channel in the card in the right hand side or in the description below. So, were you surprised with any of these hidden tributes to the past at Disneyland? And if you could bring back one extinct ride mentioned in the video, which one would it be? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget that TPM Vids merch is available, link is in the description. Thanks so much for watching! Click the TPM icon on the screen to subscribe to this channel, and check out some of these other videos which we're sure you'll like.